my computer says we're at four o'clock. Is that what yours says? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. All right. Well, we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll all join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We'll start with the approval of minutes from our June 15th meeting. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion that we approve. And I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carried. On to the financial reports. Everybody get got copies of those. They all have a chance to look at them. Are there any questions? Otherwise, Joe, do you uh, want to summarize? Well, I think uh, to summarize, we we are still seeing reduced water consumption in the city and in the wholesale customers. Um, less less so in the wholesale. Well, less so in Sheboygan Falls. Uh, Kohler, Village of Kohler was uh, using uh, quite a bit less water. Um, we're starting to see that turn around more now in July. Uh, you could see for <clears throat> accumulated billing for 2020 uh, through the end of June was down about $505,000 compared to 2019. Uh, 505,000. Yes, so that's a, a pretty significant decrease that we're we're holding through six months of the year. Um, of course, not much we can do about that <clears throat> except uh, adjust our expenditures accordingly, which we've done. Um, you should have received separately the the detailed voucher sheet, so you have those uh, details separately. And I guess the only other comment I would make on, on the cash reserve figure, <clears throat> uh, that that is uh, uh, still elevated due to the, the ban uh, bonds that we received just about um, six weeks ago of 3.1 million. We, we certainly haven't spent all of that in, in the, the time we've had it. So the cash reserve is still, uh, higher due to that. Any questions for, for Joe as far as uh, the financial reports? Any comments? Um, none for me. The only thing I would say, Joe, is I really appreciate seeing the details in advance. Okay, we'll keep that up. Yeah, it definitely allows us to uh, take a look, see if there's any questions or problems that we might uh, want to want to bring up and uh, probably expedite the process. So um, we still have a positive return on rate base, so which is a good thing. Yep. All right. Do we need a motion to? Uh, Accept the financial reports as presented. I will make that motion. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. Motion carried. Okay, Joe. Superintendent's report. <clears throat> well, for uh, operations, um, you'll see that uh, for 2020 June, we actually uh, produced a little more water than in 2019. Uh, the uh, reduction in revenues was for the whole first six months of the year. For June of this year, we actually are seeing seeing that recovery. So we pumped about six and a half percent more water this June than past, um, which is good. We're still uh, we, we pumped a lot of water in 2018. I think uh, we had a little more of a dry early summer. 
you can see we're well well down from 2018, but compared to last year, we're doing pretty good. Um, our year today, uh, high lift uh, average day so far is about 10.8 million gallons. Last year it was 12.4 and 2018 was 12.9. So that again shows the, the cumulative effect of, of the, uh, the decrease we've seen with the shutdowns and the pandemic. Um, otherwise in operations, uh, I don't have too much else to add. Uh, we do have all of our basins now back in service. We had the East Sedimentation Basin out of service for cleaning and then for some analysis and investigation work, and that's now been completed. Uh, so everything is back in service. Uh, we did top off some of our filtration beds with anthracite that we had purchased <clears throat> in previous years and, and still had uh, some remainder. Um, you know, a variety of, of other maintenance work is, as usual, keeping everything in, in good condition. Um, I think for operations, I'll, I'll leave it there, unless there's any questions. No, I don't see anything that I care to ask about, Joel. Thank you. Tom, um, do you have anything? I have. I just had one question on the when they on the East Basin when they did the investigative work would would they find anything or is it just I know there was some concrete issue you thought you might have there. Okay, did we lose somebody? I'm still here. Did we lose see, the other? I don't see Joel's did video. Oh, I lose Joel. The microphone is showing still active, but I don't see his video. I like my question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a hardball question, Tom. I can see why. I, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I just heard what they found when, when the analysis maybe i missed one of the reports i didn't yeah i don't think we got a report on that joe uh tom that i saw oh yeah can you hear me jerry yep we can hear you now hear me yep, yep i can, can hear, hear you do we lose you yeah i think we did he just oh, blinked on yeah, I just blanked out there. Wait for him to get back in. Here he comes. Okay, there you I'm are. back. Is that yeah, better? Right. Yeah, yeah. We thought maybe you didn't like Tom's question. You just didn't want to answer it, so you left. Well, I heard East. And that's about all I heard. Oh. Well, you, you said you, you did an analysis. Are they were looking at the, some concrete issues there? I was just curious if they if you got a report back on that. Uh, we've not got a report back. What they did, they came out with a, a lift and they put up a, a crew and they painted every crack and every spalled area and every place where mineral had come through the concrete and deposited. And then they came out with a laser and they scanned all that in. So once they kind of accumulate all that information, they should be able to give us a, a report about how much damage there is on that structure on the okay. inside and outside. So I'd say the, the field work has been done, but no report yet. Okay. Okay. All right. Construction maintenance. I pull up my report here. I lost that for a second. 
I have to say, I think I have faster internet at home than here in the in the office. <laughs> well, um, yeah. So for distribution, we we did have one main break on the 23rd in Geely. <clears throat> that may have been related to some setup for the construction project out there, but that was a 12-inch main break that the crew repaired. Um, Otherwise, I think June, a lot of work you'll see. <clears throat> uh, we've been on and off of Commerce Street, down where they're kind of revitalize, revitalizing that area. Um, we've replaced some hydrants in, in a variety of areas. Uh, the crew did work with Vinton Construction on, on a temporary water connection to Rock Line. You'll recall that we're replacing water main there, but there was concern about damaging it while rock line is, is uh, so busy. So we laid a temporary service, I think like two feet in the ground and are serving them now on the temporary connection. Uh, that all went well. Um, a number of taps for old lead service replacements, you'll see. Um, we did a little assistance with the contractor that put up a temporary antenna tower at the Georgia Standpipe by Horace Mann School. If you saw on our website or if you, if you go by, it's, it's a pretty significant temporary structure. And that was primarily for US Cellular's antennas so that they could remain in service. But we also have some equipment up there and so does the police department. Um, and I think otherwise for distribution, there was preparation for work that's going on now out at Geely Avenue and uh, uh, several other locations in the city. Do we, do we have anything going on on North Avenue um, out, uh, I don't know, around 31st Street or something like that? Um, I don't think so, Jerry. Nothing big. Okay. Might have I had, a hydrant or something in that location. Yeah, I had someone ask me about that, and he said there's there's barricades or something out there, but nothing seems to be going on with it. Um, and then another location on Mill Road, um, Eisner Mill Road, anything like that, or is that out in the town? Yeah, that would not be us. Okay. I know for the Geely project, they have stockpiled some stuff further to the to the west out there past the project. If you if you drive out to Geely, you'll see some of the material stocked up out there. Okay, all right, all right. I'll I'll get a little bit better handle on that from the gentleman that um, you know asked me today. As I was, you know, just driving through, he flagged me down. He knows who I am, so he flagged okay. me down. He says. What's the water utility doing out there? And I said, I don't know, but we have a meeting this afternoon. I'll ask. So, okay. Anyway, all right. Could be that. On that we go. Um, for customer relations and fiscal, you'll see <clears throat> uh, June of 2020 versus 2019, many fewer visits to our pay window in the office. Um, more people using the drop boxes. Uh, total payments are down by about 500, and we think that's the, due to lack of disconnection program and lack of late fees. Um, we're expecting that to turn around. Uh, fewer calls coming in, even though our office is staffed and able to answer calls, it's just fear coming in. Um, we did have about $196,000 outstanding after the due date for the, the latest billing in June. And mm -hmm. we narrowed, we whittled that down to 109,000 by the end of the month. Okay, I guess that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, that, that's our reality right now. Mm -hmm. um, People know they don't have to pay, so they don't pay. Yeah, and I think in some cases there's there's hardship, but in some cases there may be abuse of the 
the situation. Yeah. One PSC. Um, I'm sorry. One PSC complaint. Yeah, that involved a uh, a, uh, a payment that was received late. The, the late fee issue, which we've seen many times, uh, but in this case. Uh, with the, the crisis, we're able to, uh, we're not enforcing those late fees as normally we would be. Um, I think uh, for social, social media, no, no real big highlights there. Um, we did begin the commercial and industrial cross-connection inspection program. Um, we have a vendor, HydroCorp, that pretty much uh, it, uh, comp uh, completes that work for us, but we worked with them as to when to start it up again and how to communicate with customers about that uh, startup, and that seems to be going well. And then we ourselves did begin meter change outs for industrial and commercial customers uh, just in, in July now. Uh, we're not currently doing residential change outs unless there's uh, an emergency, a leak, or, or a replacement of a lead service line. And I guess just generally, you can, so, you can see we, we still have a lot of people paying, you know, check by check one time. 82% of our customers pay like that and about 18% are on an auto payment uh, plan. We seem to have trouble budging those numbers much. And that's the extent of the superintendent's report. All right. On that, I don't think we need a motion to approve that or accept, we just accept that. Um, excuse me. On to our items previously held over, um, lead service line replacement program, up and running. It is up and running. That's the good news. The um, Public Service Commission approved our program, and we were able to listen live to their commission meeting and hear their approval. So that was exciting. And the City Public Works Committee made a recommendation to approve the changes to ordinance to, to comply with the Public Service Commission's program that was approved uh, on our behalf. And the Common Council also approved the ordinance change. So we now have everything we need for the lead service line replacement program, financial assistance program really to be in place. Um, and we're uh, very quickly rolling that out on the Geely Avenue water main project because that includes a number of lead service line replacements. So our utility accountant, accountant and customer service or uh, customer relations and fiscal supervisor are uh, working with the distribution supervisor to finalize the documentation for that program and project and get it out to the affected customers. Uh, we did notify the affected customers that the assessments uh, would, would no longer be used to pay for the lead service line replacements and instead we'd be uh, offering a loan program. And we had one or two calls about that, but I think people understood it was not a, a, a a setback, it, it had a lot of positives for them and the cost was pretty much the same. Um, so I think uh, we're, we're now ready to use our, our own loans and our own grants. Um, just to complicate things, next year the DNR decided to offer grants again. <laughs> so if we received those next year, we would have WDNR grants Sheboygan Water Utility Grants and Sheboygan Water Utility Loans as the ways to pay for lead service line replacements in cases where people don't uh, want to pay outright by themselves. Joe on Geely Avenue, how many customers are affected? 
Uh, with lead service lines, I think it came in at a, about uh, 35 to 40 mark. That's that's a rough okay. estimate. Okay. Anything else on that subject, Joe? No. Okay, on to our raw water improvements intake project. Well, here I did uh, embed a photo from the, the 3D modeling. And if you look at that, you can get a inside view of the, the uh, raw water pump station. And you'll see, I think they're green. I'm a little color challenged, but I think you'll see three green, yep, large diameter. <laughs> okay, that's good. Pipes and and at the end, uh, three vertical turbine pump heads. Uh, that's what you're seeing there. And beneath the floor would be the the large well where the intake pipelines uh, deliver water. You'll see to the right a blank pad for a fourth pump in the future. Um, you'll see a mezzanine with some, some air handling equipment. Uh, you'll see a door, which in this case uh, goes to an area where the, the uh, uh, backup uh, generators would be located. Um, I couldn't, uh, I think with the online board doc system, put the whole the video, but we had basically a walkthrough tour of the new facility. Um, so one of our consultants had on the visual or virtual reality helmet and took us through and we could see on our screen as he was walking through, which wow. was really helpful. We identified a few things that we didn't want and we got a really good overall feeling for the, the space. So it was a very good exercise. Um, the other embedded uh, file is um, what we used in meeting with uh, some of our city colleagues to talk about the site and also to give an update to the Public Service Commission. Um, I just wanted you to have that for completeness. And I guess uh, if you go to maybe the fourth or fifth page in, you'll see a plan view of where the building is proposed to be now and, and it's kind of the, the what we've decided is the best orientation. Um, initially we started it being a little further north in a, in a <clears throat> flatter area closer to the lake <clears throat> but I think with lake levels rising and more and more shoreline damage and just the reality that it would be better to locate it closer to our existing structure than further away, we ended up with this structure location, which is a little more into the hillside down there. And it does require the relocation of some large, a large sewer, uh, sewer storm sewer outfall that is right in that area. Yep. Um, but uh, we believe, uh, Public Works Department is, is okay with our relocation of that. And this kind of preserves more of the flat shoreline area uh, as well. And it seems to be an, an, an optimized location for the building. Um, you know, as you look further, you can see some details about the building a large pump room in, in the central area on one end, the electrical room and generator room. On the other end, chemical feed uh, rooms, a small work area, small restroom. Um, so there, there's not a lot of extra stuff in this building. It's pretty much a, a pump station with some additional spaces as needed. <clears throat> Uh, we did want to protect it from the lake, and, and, and that's uh, another reason we tried to set it back and make it more uh, short uh, dimension towards the lake and long dimension perpendicular to the lake than we had initially considered. Uh, another 
item of importance, there, there is a disc golf hole in that area. So we've had some initial discussion about how to relocate that. Um, I did not realize that that disc golf course was that extensive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 18 holes. It's pretty extensive. It, it, it uh, covers quite an area. It covers quite an area. Yeah. Pretty cool. You, you got to move two T's, it looks like, huh, on here? Yeah. So we're still, you know, trying to be open on ideas with that, with uh, the parks people and, and starting those discussions. Um, as far as architectural elements, you'll see they've, they've kind of taken at least the newer areas of the plant and tried to continue some of those elements in the, in the proposed building. Um, sort of with stone above the windows, uh, block glass windows, and door structures that, that resemble the ones we have. Um, a little bit of a, uh, I'm forgetting the exact term, I call it a vaulted roof, but there's a better term for it, but, but not a flat roof, a, a roof with some uh, a gable structure to it. Um, but it's pretty much a functional building, um, not occupied, uh, you know, for the most part. Um, but we presented this, uh, or CDM and, and ourselves presented this to our colleagues with the city and, and with the Public Service Commission. And I think uh, we got some good feedback and a good understanding of what we're proposing to do. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, an entire site survey uh, was completed for those details, and they're incorporating that into the kind of uh, completion of the preliminary design, which really should take place before the next board meeting. Okay. And I think that would be my, my summary of the raw water project at this point. All right. Any questions for Joe on that over and above his um, his report? What, is, what are the, uh, the the actual bonds going out for this project? Well, those would come later. So the, the ban uh, should cover a significant portion of the engineering costs. And then when, when we move into final engineering, <clears throat> Uh, we'll, we will evaluate either a safe drinking water loan with the state. Uh, we'll probably, you know, recommend applying for that because you, you don't know if you qualify until you apply. So I think we'll, we'll have to apply for that and see if we qualify. And that would be, you know, a, a figure of close to, to uh, $30 million roughly. Right. Uh, if we don't qualify for safe drinking water loan or some federal monies that, that the mayor's has some interest in as well, uh, then we're back to the private bond market, um, you know, which with rates so low right now, isn't the worst ever solution. Um, you can go to 40 years in, in private market bonds whereas the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program is 30 years maximum. And then there's the, the issue that they're callable and have a few <clears throat> adjustments like that as well. But that kind of, the details of that funding, Tom, would, were about uh, a year away from. Thanks. All right, moving on. Items for discussion and possible action. Um, Request for approval of uh, RO withdrawing preliminary assessments on Geely Avenue project. Yeah, so here, you know, again, when we <clears throat> were preparing for the project, our lead service line program was not approved by PSC, and we initially proposed using assessments. They then uh, directed us away from that towards the loan program. So now we uh, I would request that the board uh, 
request council withdraw the preliminary assessments because we're not going to enforce those or use those anymore on, on Geely Avenue. We're going to use the loan program. Okay, entirely... Go ahead. This doesn't seem entirely reasonable. Yes, right. I would I would make a motion that we approve uh, withdrawing the preliminary assessments on the Geely Avenue project. And I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. And uh, uh, Joe, will you circulate that for our signatures then, uh, like you've been doing? Or Yes, we'll do that electronically. We're good. All right, next, uh, request approval 2021 preliminary water utility budget. And everybody's seen it, everybody likes it. You are ready to approve it? And uh all the <laughs> all the forecasts are within a reasonable range of of uncertainty. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would say of all my years working on the utility budget, you know, revenue predictions are really tough this year because of the, the crisis. Um I think we've got a reasonable expectation you know we've uh our, our estimate for this year uh we dropped our expenditures by about 17 percent in in, re in reaction to the situation and we're estimating our revenues for the entire year will be down by 10 percent compared to what we budgeted for 2020 The accountant and I both both feel that's reasonable given the information we have, um, but I'd say the level of uncertainty is higher than in some other years. First of all, it's a little foggy. <laughs> a little foggy, yeah. And, and this budget has a rate increase built into it. Uh, it has. <laughs> A rate increase built into it late in the fall, Tom. We we actually applied for a rate increase last fall, fall of 2019, and it still is not through their system. It's oh, getting okay. close. Huh. We had anticipated it would be in effect of spring of 2020, but that did not happen. Um, we have had communication from the PSC. We we know they're getting close, but I'm guessing it's still one to two months away. Uh, but yes, we still were <laughs> optimistic and included a, a little bit of it later this year. Um, but not having that increase did affect some of our estimates of the 20 in the 2020 budget because we certainly thought we'd have some of that revenue this year. And what was the rate? Just to, uh, if you could just refresh me, what was what was the rate increase? Was it a what was the percentage, or how did you calculate it? Um. We expect it will be close to 10%, but we don't know yet until the cost of service study is, is run by the Public Service Commission. Okay. So we request like a, um, an update in, in the utilities rate of return, which, you know, Jerry referenced that that's been dropping and dropping. Right. Uh, you know, normally we like to see it around three and a half or 4%. So when we go in for a rate case, the Public Service Commission will look at all those numbers <clears throat> and try to adjust our rates to, to get us back to that rate of return. And then we see what the actual rate increase is coming out of that. So we, have, we haven't seen that number yet. I think it's going to be close to 10%. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. In looking... Go ahead. Go ahead. Still the smallest part of our utility bill. <laughs> it is. <clears throat> I could highlight a few of the capital items if you if you want me to. I, can, I think that's where you know the operating expenses. Um, again, you you guys have a pretty good handle on what's going on there, and uh, know where those things are good. I'm I'm more interested in the capital outlay. <clears throat> okay. I'm not sure and, how the uh, other two commissioners feel, but 
Apple investments are always interesting. Yes. Well, and as we realized uh, revenues were going to be impacted here this spring, the, the first thing we did was delay capital projects. So as you see some of the budget 2020 and estimated 2020 figures, if you see estimated 2020 being much lower, that's most likely because we, we delayed a project. Um, so again, for budget 2020, we had uh, a figure of about $11 million in total expenditures, and we're now estimating our total expenditures to be about $9.2 million. Um, for 2021, <clears throat> we budgeted about $1.23 million for water main projects, hydrants. Um, this does not include lead service line uh, costs. And this is primarily Georgia Avenue, South 8th to South 14th Street. It also includes some transmission upgrades in, in the Barron's Parkway area uh, to better uh, link um, transmission in the industrial park. And it does include monies to upsize uh, a water main extended in uh, South 12th Street to the proposed Kohler Golf Course. We're not entirely sure if that's going to happen. Uh, most of the cost of that would be on the developer, but we would like to upsize from 8 inch to 12 inch, and in those situations, the utility has to pay the upsize charge. So that's also included in that figure. So by and large, it's a, it's a fairly uh, modest water main distribution uh, investment for the utility, but you know because we've got <clears throat> a lot going on, more uncertainty. I, I really challenged uh, Supervisor McMillan to keep it as tight as he could, and and I think that figure reflects that uh, effort to do so. Um, one of the things that's been on the radar for <laughs> many years is another river crossing, Sheboygan River crossing. You know, when you think of the city and, and the network of water pipes and you want a robust network, that's always great. And then you hit rivers and the network starts to break down because you don't have multiple pipes going under the rivers in most cases. We, we have enough. Um, I should have counted beforehand. I think we have maybe seven currently in total, but much of our water supply now is south of our water usage is south of the Sheboygan River. And it's really, it's getting time to get another significant river crossing in place. You know, half of them date to the early 1900s. And anyway, you'll see uh, some money for the engineering work for a river crossing uh, near 11th Street. Uh, we've identified some construction happening in that area that would kind of tie in nicely with a directional bore like we did under the river to serve the uh, uh, the new uh, art uh, facility out on on the far end of Erie Avenue. Um, we have so then when you on eleventh would this go? I guess near the Garden um, apartments down there. That's right, Jerry. It's in that area near the. Yep. Go, past the island that's no longer visible? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. It would probably be a 12 inch because directional boring is uh, really cost effective for 12 inch pipes. And when you start upsizing, it gets more costly. So it would be north of the Penn Avenue Bridge though? Yes. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, a small amount of radio meters yet to complete our systems. So you see 400 Orion radio generators. That's what's going on there. Uh, we're starting back in meter replacements. So we've got about $125,000 in, in just meter replacements. <clears throat> um, you know, the biggie is uh, raw water improvements, intake pipeline, well pump station, final design. 
So we've got about 1.85 million in, in for final design of the raw water project. Uh, we don't have a contract yet for that. We don't have anything but a, a very preliminary estimate of that cost, uh, but we've included it in the budget in, in that way. <clears throat> uh, Barron's Parkway pit pump upgrade. Um, Barron's Parkway uh, near, uh, um, what is it there, Business Drive, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Business Drive, I'm sorry. We have an in-ground uh, pumping station. It's small, it can pump about 400 gallons a minute from the non-boosted zone into the boosted zone. Uh, to the east of NEMAC, and it's kind of a, just a helpful little um, backup system, uh, but we'd like to upgrade it and have more capability there, so we have some design dollars there for that project. Um, under structures, we've got engineering work for retaining wall rehab. You know, if you can visualize when you drive into the utility to the left along the area known as the Buffalo Pit, before my time and maybe maybe even before Jerry's time, I'm not sure, but a, a wooden retaining wall was put in. Um, that wall is gradually failing. Uh, the heavy rains did create a, a small sinkhole, which we filled now, but, but the wall is failing. It's a very sharp, slope and as happens with all retaining walls, they eventually fail. Uh, in 2014, we had Donahue do a pretty thorough study of the wall and propose some solutions. They're very costly. We decided to wait a while, but I, I would like to revisit that and, and take you know a preferred solution and, and get it into construction form because we uh, we're going to have to do something with that wall and, and that slope uh, fairly soon now. We've, I, I think, waited about as long as we should wait. Uh, were you here prior to that wall being in, Jerry, or do you recall? Oh, yeah, I remember the buffalo down there and everything else, yes. Okay. I think it's just become kind of a, a vulnerable spot, so we Unfortunately, the, our property line is right there as well, so we need to work with the parks folks and come up with a solution that makes sense for everybody. Um, yeah, we don't, don't want the road to, to fall away, so. No. <clears throat> um, some ongoing roof replacement. We have a lot of roofs. We try to do a little bit at each year. Uh, another biggie is the East Basin structural repairs that, that Tom referred to. Uh, we've put in $300,000. That's a rough estimate. Um, you know, that project is important. I wouldn't say it's it's urgent, uh, but I, I've included it uh, for now. Um, our copy machine is getting uh, to the point of replacement. Those have really come down in costs. It's almost, well, I can remember the Renault's used to be like $50,000. Now it's a $15,000 item. And some other smaller office equipment. Um, Do we use scanners for anything like that, Joe? Uh, the engineers on there? Yeah, we do have you know, they scan in payments and engineering has a scanner to scan, um, you know, note cards and things with old plumber's information. Okay. Um, we decided to wait on vehicles. So we have no vehicles in for 2021. And then just some, uh, we would like to replace our GPS survey unit. It's getting extensive use and it's getting old. Um, I guess those are really the highlights. Another thing we, we do not have in 2021 is money for um, water tower stripping and painting. Um, 
the last project we have that in that category is really Taylor Hill tank itself. And we've decided to hold off on that a bit. We've done the masonry structure at Taylor Hill, but we've not done anything with the tank or the steel roof structure. And eventually we're going to have to, uh, but not next year. That's gonna be very costly as well. We're gonna put the word Sheboygan back up there. <laughs> Well, you can uh, some of it you can just still barely see from those drone shots if you look carefully. Yeah, I know that's why that's why I said it. You you, yeah. you could probably go up there and, and paint right over those those spots. <laughs> yeah. That's very interesting that that's still there. You know, it's yeah, still visible drone, anyway. Uh, we're having a good time with the drone, but it does reveal uh, you know problems that <laughs> sometimes you don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> which which will come up a little later, right? Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Joe on budget? Uh, none from me. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. I uh, I agree. Uh, is there a motion to approve the uh, preliminary budget? So moved. I second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. One comment. Um, you know, a budget. Our, our our educated guesses as best as we can do. And um, you know, Joe always seems to find money when we have special things that come up. So um, well, that's if, we have to, yep, if we have to move things around a little bit, if something urgent comes up, we can do that. So anyway, motion carried, moving on. Uh, <clears throat> approval of the Fioretti proposal on health insurance consulting services. Um. Well, the board will recall we had a challenging health insurance renewal uh, this year in June. Uh, we, we did get through it, and I think we have a reasonable plan. Uh, but part of our discussion was the need for some additional consulting service and, and maybe some fresh eyes to look at our health insurance plan and our process um, going forward with a little more of a strategic approach. I think we've worked with Hub as a broker for many years, and I think they've provided outstanding service to the utility. Um, but I think they they also felt that, you know, maybe some fresh eyes would, would be helpful um, as we kind of look at fully insured versus self-insured and how do we maintain this very significant benefit for our employees uh, while also doing due diligence and, and being effective. Um, so our broker led me to an individual at uh, um, the other accounting firm in town, Jerry. I, the name escapes me, but <laughs> the other one. And yeah, well, well, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a couple, Clifton Larson Allen. Uh, yes. Yeah, and okay. an individual at Clifton led me to elsewhere to Mr. Anthony Fioretti. And Anthony has worked uh, decades in the health insurance industry and is now um, running his own consulting business. Uh, so you, you see a proposal from Anthony um, Consulting Services Proposal for Sheboygan Water Utility. Um, you'll see some of his background. Uh, the utility accountant, Ms. Scott Secker, and I interviewed Anthony by phone, had a good discussion with him, uh, felt that he was very communicative and knowledgeable and, and based on some uh, basic information from us was was kind of able to zero in on our plan and have some understanding and insight. Um, after our discussion and, and kind of our uh, description of challenges that we've had and, and our staffing levels and expertise, we asked Mr. Fioretti to provide a proposal to the to the board for review, which is what you have here excuse me, <clears throat> as to how he could help the board and the utility with its health plan. Um, so 
So you see what, what he does is not come in and, and do like a one month evaluation. He wants to establish an ongoing strategy uh, and he prefers a three year time frame to work with a customer, a client. Um, he has to see, you know, the market develop. He has to see the plan in action. And, you know, that's his approach to, to come up with more of a strategy, not just, you know, here's the solution, do this. And I think as I heard that, that philosophy, I think that's, you know, we've seen a lot of changes. I've seen some of my peers that, oh, you know, now let's do this. And this is going to save us all kinds of money. And now let's do this because this is going to save us all. And there's just this hopscotching that I don't really think saves the kind of money that they think it's going to going in. And I, I really think a longer term strategy is, is a better investment. Um, well, and as we know, things can change. Things can yeah. change. <laughs> yes, definitely. Looks like you're proposing to have results in time so changes could be made for next year. You know, and, and if recommendations are made and followed and they don't pan out, then there can be a follow up like, uh, you know, what happened with this recommendation? Why is this not working? And right. one follow up Lisa and I both had was to check some references. Uh, who have worked with Anthony, and he provided three. I was able to make contact with two. I think the other one was out a lot. I wasn't successful in, in contacting that person, but I can communicate with two by phone. Uh, both were with uh, companies about two to three times the size of the utility, and they were private companies. Um, and they were at the one was the their CEO and one was more of an HR director, um, and they both were very uh, uh, glowing in their recommendation of Anthony and the service he provides. Um, I asked pretty basic questions, you know, about time frame, ease of communicating. Uh, was the investment worth it in terms of cost? Um, and, and would they work with him again? And, you know, down the line, they were all very extremely positive about it. Um, in some cases, they didn't follow the recommendations for a variety of reasons, but I think they still felt that they had a, a more full approach to their, to their, their plan. Um, you know, maybe other relationships uh, were more important than, you know, making a certain change that he recommended and, and they had that kind of flexibility in their approach. Like a good idea. The, the references were all glowing and I, I guess, you know, I had indicated to the board that I would follow up with this and present uh, you know, some other plan and, and that's what we have here. And I, I, I do think, that go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. No, go ahead. Well, I, I do think, you know, myself, our accountant, uh, our broker have worked, you know, to the best of our abilities, but we're, we're not experts in health insurance plans. And, uh, I, I think, you know, long ago in distant history, we, we always bargained over the health insurance plan and it developed from that kind of environment. And we never really had in-house expertise. Um, and I think that's what this would <clears throat> lend us for a three year period. For the cost of $12,000 it looks like? Yep. Uh, per year, yes. Yeah. Well, oh, that's per year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, I hate to, we have a family meeting coming up at six o'clock, six o'clock Eastern time, which is five o'clock our time. So okay. I'm going to have to pop out. And I, I ask your forgiveness for that. Yep. All right. Well, I think we're, 
what, do you have any thoughts on this at all? I, I think Mark? it's worthwhile from the discussions we've had regarding health care and the issues we've had. I think that it's good to have someone help out who's an expert. So I would and, make and a hopefully, move. hopefully we can recoup those costs uh, in, in in savings over a period of three years. Indeed, in the future. Yep. I would so agree. I would move that we accept the proposal and uh, proceed with the accountant with with the uh, consultant. I would second that motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 And, and chair uh, votes aye. Forgive me, but I. We'll see you next month. All right, Mark. Take care. Thank you, Mark. All right, moving on. Uh, number four on this item, uh, update on latest round of lead and copper sampling. Yes, so under EPA requirements, uh, the utility samples for lead and copper in, in drinking water every three years. Um, so our uh, sampling period is due this year and the monitoring period is from July 1st to October 31st. And just as an update, uh, we're required to uh, begin our sampling to comply with, with EPA. Um, so far, we've distributed 28 of the 30 sample kits. And again, these go to homeowners for the most part, uh, maybe a couple small businesses, and they collect the samples in their residences on our behalf. And, and this is how we're uh, to do the sampling. We provide the instructions and the equipment um, a couple changes that, you know, slowly came out of the Flint, Michigan catastrophe. Uh, all sites now must have a, a lead lateral. In the past, utilities were allowed to have a mix of lead and copper. And I think as lead has become of more concern, the EPA tightened that, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, they've now implemented a new trigger level. The action level is 15 parts per billion, uh, where you line up your samples and the 90th percentile uh, is, is 15 parts per billion or higher. Now they said if your 90th percentile <clears throat> sample is 10 parts per billion or higher, you must review corrosion control treatment and re-optimize. That's a new element from three years ago. So if you're between 10 and 15, the EPA is going to require utilities to review their corrosion control and, and optimize it. Um, if you're above 15 parts per billion, then, then you're into more public notification and, and other things that existed before. Um, so all of our sites have been reviewed and, and approved by DNR for uh, the tier one requirements. We have 45 lead lateral sampling sites, 30 required for sampling, 15 for alternates or backups. If for some reason the, the folks don't collect the samples or we can't get them. Um, we've been maintaining our corrosion control program, uh, you know, really without much change. Uh, I, I think when, they, when the EPA talks about optimizing, they're usually talking about feeding a phosphate at a higher level. So we have, since 2017 been feeding at a slightly higher level <clears throat> to kind of follow that EPA lead that, that we want to be sure it's optimized. Um, in the past, our results have always been below the action level of 15 parts per billion. Uh, certainly where there are lead laterals, 
uh, there, there can be dissolved lead in water, and we notify customers of all kinds of ways that they can reduce that risk in their homes, and we want them to reduce that risk. You know, on top of that, we do the corrosion control to, to minimize that effect, but uh, there are lead lines, there are old lead fixtures in homes, um, and it's important part of our educational outreach, the, the whole uh, issue of lead in drinking water. Um, that's kind of our status update, update. We should have test results later this fall. Um, our results have normally, well, they've ranged anywhere from a, a 90th percentile result of three or four parts per billion to eight. Um, they can be a little bit variable because lead it, it depends on uh, very particular circumstances. It, it is not coming out of the water treatment plant or the lake, but it is being dissolved in, in private lead laterals and fixtures, and that's a, that's a variable process. Um, but to summarize then, we should have results by the end of the fall. I'm not expecting we'll be above an action limit. It's, it's possible. At, at, uh, isn't the expectation, but uh, that's our summary to date. Okay. Any questions, Tom? No, I'm good. Okay. Moving on, approval of repairs of shoreline protection along the East Basin. You, if you saw the picture that uh, Joe sent out that was taken from our drone. Yes, uh, I did. You'll see that uh, that one area, there's very little riprap there. <laughs> yeah, and that is surprising and troubling. The size of those boulders, they're two to three ton mm -hmm. boulders. And over time, that, that high lake water can just, just move them, and it has. They, they were there. I, I know they were there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the city also has faced a lot of shoreline protection issues. Uh, which which they're addressing in, in various places. Um, as we build the raw water improvement project, we're going to have to extend shoreline protection, and, and that's going to be an, an addition to what we have in place. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you looked at that photo, <clears throat> you could see we now have uh, our sheeting, which is kind of the last line of defense exposed to to the lake water, right. and that's not good. So what we've done, the, the DNR allows an emergency shoreline protection uh, permit, and we have applied for that. Uh, I feel we do have an emergency. I don't want to see us go another winter with that exposed sheeting like that. Um, what can we do about it? Well. We've reached out in a few different ways. We know what was in place has been effective because it's been there for decades, and, and until now it hadn't hadn't shown any failure. So it, it's an effective uh, uh, structure and, and placement of, of rock. So we basically like to replace what was there. Um, so Supervisor Swearingen met with some folks <clears throat> from Wagner Excavating, and, and they've been doing some shoreline protection work, actually. We're, we're not alone in, in this, certainly. Uh, they came in and looked at what we have and what we'd like to replace <clears throat> and came up with a proposal. They would provide both the appropriate rock and place the rock um, and re build the, the revetment as, as it had been designed and also extend it vertically. Uh, right now with those high, with that high water, the waves really just come up over it onto the drive. Um, so we'd like to continue and, and add some height to it in addition to replacing the area that's now bare. Mm -hmm. um, I did also ask our crew to look at the project. You know, we can move heavy rock and such. Um, so what you can see is sort of a, a comparison if we uh, had Wagner do this work or if we did it ourselves. 
Um, I think you'll see there isn't a huge cost savings to do it ourselves, uh, but it is about ninety thousand dollars estimated for for Wagner to provide and, and do that work. Um, one thing we still have to look into is uh, are we required to bid this out or in an emergency situation can we consider a sole proposal like this so we have to do a little mm -hmm. more homework on that but i wanted the board to see this kind of cost figure and again i feel like uh, we would be remiss if we do not address this uh this fall i agree um <laughs> We've got a, a large investment in that uh, facility, and we do not want to turn around and look at, uh, um, you know, to have some major, major catastrophe. Are our guys, um, can I, uh, I'm sure they can do it. I mean, but if Wagner is doing it for, for others and that stuff along, and I mean, there's people putting rocks all up and down the Lake Michigan shoreline. Um, there's got to be some uh, expertise in just how those things are placed. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Jerry. The, the placement is, is important, as important as the shape of the rock. Right. And I think, you know, Wagner's developed some of that expertise. I, I guess if we run into a problem where we would have to bid this out and we and I feel like we're running out of time, you know, then – we we might feel that the crew doing the work would be the best solution. Right. But I think, you know, I, I know the crew can place the rock, but it, it their time might be better spent elsewhere. You right. Know, if, right. Right. Unless, unless we have no other choice is what I'm trying to say. Right. Yeah. So do you want uh, approval for the Wagner proposal or – uh, at least tentative approval pending your your research, uh, whether we have to go to competitive bidding? Yeah, I think tentative pending for the research would be ideal, Jerry, because I, I, we do have some work yet to do in that area, and I, I wouldn't want the board to approve something and then we find that we need to uh, put it off. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't find either because that would turn around and only delay things. So um, I, I would make that motion to... Uh, provide tentative approval um, based upon uh, further research on whether or not this needs to be competitive bidding or if we can just accept Wagner's proposal. I second that. I should say all in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> Chair votes aye. All right. Um, any other comments, Joel, Tom? Well, the only question is that, you know, we know, it, we know it's bad right now. Um, is there any other areas that are that are starting to decay or, or starting to fail? No, that one area seemed to take the brunt of the damage so far. But uh, further down, if you walk along the road behind the plant, you'll just see stuff's been strewn up in that whole area, uh, but yeah. but not uh, the shoreline protection structure itself. Oh yeah. <clears throat> okay. I think that drone was an excellent, excellent investment. <laughs> yeah, for five hundred dollars, I think we've got our money's worth out of it already. <laughs> right. What right, What makes the hydraulics so different in this one place versus the other? I wonder. Is there? Yeah, a... I don't know. There is. Yeah. Uh, there are are those uh, structures going out into the lake. I don't know if they've being flooded now they've kind of channeled more wave action to that one spot I, it's almost like that spot has been targeted right so yeah what is, that under, right. what is that underground structure i mean you see that shadow there what is that oh that's one of the uh, the groins that were put in by the uh, army corps of oh Engineers. i see okay when you see it for the, the old one of the old jetty type things yeah Yep, that's oh, exactly okay. what Yeah, I, mean. I see further further north there, there's uh, another one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and they've rarely been flooded, and, you know, when they're flooded, they're, they're not very effective. Right, yeah. right. <clears throat> okay. Shows you just how deep that water is, how high the water is, I should say. Right, yeah. Exactly. Yep. 
All right. Moving on the agenda, next we have got um, just PSC code changes. Uh, Are there I any? Missed, I think you missed one item, Jerry. Oh, okay. What's that? What did I miss? Um, it should be a change order approval. Yeah, right. For the... Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, pr I had a printout of it here. I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't going by the one on screen. Um, approval change order on South 11th and Illinois Water Main Project. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, what happened, uh, Vinton is down there doing some water main work. We've been doing some ourselves. Uh, it was discovered that there was a, a large storm uh, culvert at a location that we we missed in our design uh, and we we have our 16 inch water main going right through the box culvert, okay. uh, which isn't going to work. Uh, <clears throat> in that area, it's very close to the river and it's very deep. So here again, I, I asked, uh, uh, excuse me one minute. Okay, sorry about that. That's no problem. Um, the, uh, as we did on the shoreline protection, I asked Supervisor McMillan to compare having the crew do this work and also get a change order from Vinton, who's out there, to do the work. Um, the cost difference was about $12,000. But the problem is this work is really, really deep, like 12 to 14 feet, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's wet, and our crew really does not work at that kind of depth. We would have to rent equipment and probably get larger trench shoes to do it, and I, I just don't think from a safety point of view it's worth it. I would agree. So I, yep. I would recommend this change order, you know, honestly, is probably a little bit high, but I think it, w it would be the best overall solution for us. Yep, I agree. I would move for approval of the change order. I second it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, moving back to the agenda that's actually on screen rather than one <laughs> I printed off. Update on late payment charges and disconnection. Um, the uh, Public Service Commission has now moved to, to allow utilities to start um, uh, accruing late payment charges again and to start disconnecting again. I think if we, as we've looked at it timing-wise for us, it didn't make sense to do that right away and I also feel that, you know, again, given the situation and given um, challenges in the local economy that we didn't need to rush right back into that. But I think in our next billing cycle, we would start uh, accruing late payment charges again. Uh, but I think we would like to hold yet on the disconnection program for a, a little while yet because that, that just doesn't seem like the right thing to be doing at this point in time. Would it make sense for us to do um, uh, some uh, public notification of the fact that, you know, that 
these will will be required again or uh, we are you know going to start charging late payment charges like effective what September 1st or something like that yeah um, and we would put it we would put it on the bills that people would receive and we could okay. put it on our website and and Facebook and such and let the news media know so yeah okay all right Fair. I no, think but, that's a, a, a good public, um, I, I guess, a, a good move publicly, uh, public image and everything else. Uh, definitely with the, this connection. We don't want to be cutting people off when, uh, you know, it, it may be that not as bad as in winter, but still um, with everything that's going on. So, <clears throat> Okay. So you don't need a motion or anything on that, do you, Joe? Um, no. No. Okay. Um, Tom, anything else on that subject? No, I'm good. Okay. PSC code changes. I have none. The PSC continues to work remotely, but they are uh, available, and we've had a lot of good communication with them lately. Okay. <clears throat> and vouchers, you've. Uh, board board members have seen the vouchers and um, uh, the backup detail. I would move to approve the vouchers. I agree. I second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. On to personnel. Review plans regarding COVID-19 risk reduction. Um, not a lot has changed for us. We're still yeah. implementing all of our uh, precautionary steps. Uh, we have had two cases. Well, we've had one case where a staff member uh, had a significant other who had family members that were positive and was at an event with those family members, uh, but the individual tested negative later and, and that was all resolved. Uh, we had another individual with a concern and, and uh, of a family member, but that test also was negative. And I, I think, you know, as we all know, these numbers are going to keep building for a while. So I think, you know, we're, we're going to have more situations mm -hmm. like, like that. But yeah, it's again, not a matter way, of if, it's a matter of when. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I think the way we structure I, personnel, we're still you know, we have some uh, resilience to that happening. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I'm glad your employees so, are very transparent yeah. about being forthright about the uh, being exposed. Yes, definitely. Because I, have a, I yeah. have a friend of mine where else in California, he had a supervisor who went to a casino, was feeling sick. They were doing daily temperature checks. He evaded the temperature check two days in a row, and then he finally tested positive for COVID-19. Needless to say, he was terminated. And they asked him, well, why did you, you know, go around the line and not get test tested for your temperature? He goes, well, your job is to catch me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I give, her, give your employees credit for being forthright <laughs> after yeah, hearing that I story. Agree. I agree. And I know... All right. Uh, you know, otherwise we are still wearing masks and, and working remotely, we're able and it makes sense. And I think, I think we're in good, good shape. Yep. No, to, you know, to tell everybody, everybody there, we appreciate their, um, their, their cooperation and, and their uh, um, you know, sticking to things so that we are following procedures and uh, it's only going to be benefiting the, the whole organization down the road. So. Thank you. All right, our next meeting um, will be in August, and according to what I see, the third Monday in August is what, the 17th? Good. Uh, at least that's the tentative date, Joel. Okay. Not the 15th? Not the 15th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 17th of August it is, and you can check with Mark to make sure that works with him. Um, okay. If you don't mind. I will and, do that. Uh, all right. 
With that, the only thing left on our agenda is a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I will second it. And uh, uh, Joe, I guess, um, close the meeting unless you have anything else to share with us. I do not. Thank you. All right, All guys. Right. We'll see you. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.